So Tresham College welcome, and he doesn't like it, electrical industry YouTube royalty, David Sparky Ninja Watts to Tresham College. Behind the camera are Hello. all the learners from level one, level two, Hello. and level three. And David's here with us at the college. You right, David? I am absolutely fine. Thank you all for coming in on a Friday. Yes. Um, and apparently your learners are coming in just for this? Yes, just to come see you. That's, 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 that's a bit concerning, but great, great. Thank you for coming in. And what are we doing? What are we going to do? So what we're going to do is I'm going to try and, we're going to try and visualize some of those changes under the 18th edition. You did a wonderful Toolbox talk on your YouTube channel, Sparky Ninja, mm. and you went through that mm. sort of guide to the electrician of all those obvious changes in the 18th. Yeah. And we've got one or two things in front of us that will help obviously it's a, you visualize know, it's, that. It's really nice to see the stuff in front of me instead of going to Google and then right click save picture when I do presentations. Having this stuff in front of you, yeah, it's it's a lot it's, it's a lot more it's a lot more useful. So we're starting straight away. Gone for the AFD art fault detection device, David. What's your thinking on those? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be nice. 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 Um, let's get more information as to how they actually work from some of the manufacturers um, to verify how they play with the the uh, the the currents and the actual uh, the frequencies. We know that they are detecting series art faults. We know that they're detecting parallel art faults. We need to be aware that they do not detect series arc faults on ring final circuits, circuits yeah. uh, due to the fact there's no potential difference across the arc. Now, let's hope, let's hope, let's hope, let's hope that they are going to prove to be a device worthy of investment. But right now they are recommended and there is in chapter 42 the section where they're saying that they're, what was it saying? It's saying locations of of sleep accommodation? Yes. Yeah? What else? Where we've got locations with um, historical or whatever. Historical yeah. constructional yeah. materials. Yeah. Here yes. we go. Chapter 42, protection against thermal effects. Is in it quick? Oh, God, yeah. I've been doing this all week. There we go. Uh, sleeping accommodation, locations with risks of fire due to the nature of processed or stored materials. So, yeah. So, I mean, from my working experience, we're looking at like food industry where you've got flour silos, you're looking at horticultural industry with hay bales, but then you've got simple paper mills, chemicals, anywhere where there's an increased risk of fire where you naturally go into chapter 42. We've now got to consider, and that's the important thing. When I'm delivering training on this, people go, oh, do we now need to have these devices installed? My first question to them is, when was the last time you had a fire starting from an arc fault? And they'll most often go, hmm. And that's it. It's, an, uh, it's a consideration, it's a recommendation, and I think that's the, the best solution to go forward with this. I've done training this week for Crossrail and uh, London Underground. They had a huge fire, King's Cross, so they had a huge engineering solution to fix that risk. Today, have they had any issues? No. So will they go into these devices? They're considering it. Right now, it's a recommendation. It's a recommendation. Push maybe my manufacturers more than the regulations themselves. Would you like to comment? I would. I would. I <laughs> you try to get me to say something. <laughs> I would love. I would love for more engineers to back this technology up. I'd love it to be more the engineering backup than the manufacturer going towards insurance to actually say that this technology is needed. Um, that's where I stand with that. Okay. So th that's it. On paper, they're a great thing. I'm going to stop talking about them there. In your wallet, it's not where your papers lives. In so. your wallet, they're not a good thing, no. and we can't. What we shouldn't be doing is going to places and going, "Oh, they haven't got the AFDD," and that AFDD is a per circuit device. That suddenly means we need more real estate within that consumer unit. Let's do fusible changes. That's not ethical. No. We don't like that. That's good. So that, we've gone from something that's obviously in there as a recommendation mm -hmm. only, mm -hmm. but then we come across the SPD whether we use single or three phase, and now yep. all of a sudden there is a requirement that we might have to fit this. Yes, we well go we've, through the calculation. we've obviously gone through, we've brought in the calculated risk level, which is coming from another standard instead of, what was it, is it AQ2? That's what we used to use, the, um, the external like the influence way. category two. You I love like the way I'm assuming you know what I'm yeah, saying? I love the way yeah. you look to me like, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 we're yeah. going with just, yes, comment below if I'm wrong. Just go yes, <laughs> David, and go in the comments if I'm talking rubbish. But yeah, we used to use AQ2 as an external influence category to consider the risk. We now have the calculated risk level. Um, Fundamentally, uh, without going into all of that, we've got to decide if the, uh, if the location is an urban or a rural environment, and then we've got to decide the length. That's the funny one the length of the overhead, low voltage and high voltage, and the underground high, uh, high voltage and low voltage transmission. Uh, but when we've gone to places and we've spoken to the experts, they kind of just say, well, if you read underneath, it says one yes, kilometer. One. Yeah, one, one. And when I train that subject and I go, yeah, 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 we do this, we do this, we do this, we do this, we do this. But then we just go with one. It kind of loses seriousness. 
uh, with the subject. Um, in, in a more rural location, uh, then they may be more required because you may most likely have overground, low voltage distribution, high yep. voltage distribution, and that distribution is coming to just you. Yep. Then you're more vulnerable. But if you're in a built up urban environment with huge amounts of metallic infrastructure underneath the ground, there's less likelihood. And I think that was the, the one thing That's everybody it. confused at the start. They thought, oh, if you're rural, yeah. you're not going to need this special bit. Of kit. This will be townies kit. This will yeah. be in the town. We'll need these. You is. It's, it's actually the other way around. Isn't it, it is. The if more you, low level pylons you've, you've got, got to, in your property. What you've got to do is you've got to imagine that you're like flying above and you've got extra vision. If you look through the ground, if you're above London or Birmingham, you're going to just see nothing but infrastructure, pipeworks, telecoms, all that voltage, all that excessive um, transient over voltage is going to hit, go down, and it's going to just, wow, it's going to go off in all sorts of directions, which means your installation is going to have a very low exposure to that. If you're out in the middle of nowhere and the lightning strikes a, a line that's just coming to you, what else is there? Yeah, what so else is there for that voltage to go toward? Nothing. Um, and that's something that we're now looking at with this new method. But yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna see probably a lot more application for these, especially when TT systems are used yeah. and in more rural locations. So, so that's the SPD. And then the one I think is quite close to your heart is the premature collapsing of surface wiring systems and the number of firefighters that we've lost. Is yeah. it, you showed eight photographs, was it, on one of your videos? Yeah, my, 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 my big problem with this is I was working with a client and I was doing, gosh, this was the uh, 70th edition Memory 3, 2015. That's when it first was introduced, but it was limited just escape routes. Yeah. Um, and what's an yeah, escape route? That's 52, so yes. And some people would say it's just a fire escape. An escape route is a point of egress access to external to the building. So if you had a room off of this room, yep and the only way out was going through that way, yep. this would become part of that route, just it would through do. room. So yes, that was part of the problem with that area. Now when I did some visits and I did some meetings with some companies, they always throw at me the question of, but it's not retrospective. And that really annoyed me. Because we've always got that with the regs. They're yeah. not retrospective. Installations aren't all of a sudden unsafe. This regulation has been introduced in reaction to the ways we've been erecting electrical installations yep. over the last 10 years or so. Contracts being cheaper, methods being quicker, sticky back trunking, quicker installation methods. Our methods of installation have got sloppy. And this has to be considered to some level of retrospectiveness, doesn't yeah. it? It has to. I'm, I say it to my learners. I say, mm. we go in there, you've got a, a cable tray. So we've got a cable tray like this with plastic ties. Yeah. We're adding another cable. How much effort is it to stick one in every two metres? It's nothing. It's you're, absolutely you're nothing. You're just going to do it. We're it's not going to We're yeah. not gonna duck out and say, that building burnt mm. to the ground. That building burnt to the ground. However, my cable stayed in place. It wasn't my one they entangled this themselves is it. with. I mean, five two one dot eleven. It was in. It's been pulled out of eleven, which was obviously for escape routes. It's now in dot ten, all systems. But as you're saying, if you install a system and you install it to five two one dot ten dot two dot two, and you say, yeah, 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 that's going to stay up for a you know premature collapse. If that's next to four or five other circuits, how are the fire how, how are the fire officers, firefighters protected yeah. for the rest of the system? They're not. But the problem is, again, this is only in our book. This isn't in the book for guys who do CCTV or data, no. but it's also not being pushed for the fire risk assessors. And this is something that we need to start yeah. talking to. All buildings that will have a fire risk assessor, they need to talk to the fire authority, they need to talk to the people who maintain the building to say, right, if there is an incident, what's the likelihood we're going to go in there? Yep. If we're going to go in there, are the wiring systems subject to premature collapse? Yep. If they are, it's not going to take five minutes to go to a part of a wiring system and change every third fitting no. or put in some additional straps around some of the containments. So metallic ties, it's, yeah. It's going to take no time at all. Um, so when it comes to the question of retrospective, we have to start, you know, being better than that Yeah. in this, in this and, and we talked about the Firefly, if I can say it correctly, nearly. Yes. Behind us here, and we talked about the fact that in the yeah. off camera, we said that if we're, we're going to do a retrofit, the fire officer is going to come in and say yes, no, or maybe, and they're going to say maybe mm. an overclip, not necessarily one in the trunk, and an overclip would be a solution well, exactly. for I mean, a retrofit. That, that doesn't even uh, impact the existing system. No. But it takes, Don't look pretty, it but takes, who cares? It takes seconds. You know, so we also suggested, didn't we, for plastic conduit, a nice easy solution. Let's get rid of. It's the first time I've seen these. Yeah. I really like these. Yep. So yeah. we've gone from. White plastic, so it could be black, but white plastic, hmm. glossy white metal. Yeah, and if you just put those on the van instead of these ones, yeah. you haven't got that decision to make, it's done for you. It's a really, really good idea. It is fantastic. Yeah. And we also, off camera, and again, we can discuss it here, we talked about whether we can or can't use a plastic wall plug to support a metallic 
uh, such as metallic saddle yeah. and there's issues and we've, we've talked before about screws such as like Bulldog that are actually mm. plug free Yeah. and we've got our own thinking on that but we are suggesting the industry is saying for premature mm. that these may hold long enough for that 30 minutes or so even though there's no time on but please we didn't say yeah David definitely didn't say what premature collapse <laughs> no. was was the time no and neither did I but let's say 30 minutes the rooms ablaze it's gonna be a mess is the fire officer gonna go in there are we expecting the plug to hold up for 30 minutes well there's some research around that we're not going to go into it. it but there is some research around yeah it, I mean, the burn research establishment definitely concluded that in some scenarios the plastic rubber plug will fail they sampled it they said in some scenarios it will yeah the question is how much of the energy was there how long it was there and this is why some of the people are saying well yeah but that's a long time yeah and that's why we're saying well how long is this system supposed to stay up for and we don't seem to have nobody will tell you that answer any information on that one he won't even tell you that answer because nobody knows the answer no and if anyone would know the answer he'd know the answer yeah. well okay that's what i would go with yeah. so if i look at one or two of those things we'll just cover one more thing let's have a just a nice simple one to end with shall we look at the period between testing because we often do you, do you test yours at home I camera. have a board full of RCBOs. And you test them how often? I think they're still there. Okay. Um, every, every, oh, every, every, every three months. Until you get to Christmas when you're going to think again? Until, yeah, my boy's under there and I pull them out and I take them again. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. so under the 18th edition, we know a simple change for us is the RCDs, in this case being an RC, yeah. miniature RCBO, needs to be checked now not every quarter that we're actually going half yearly. We're half yearly, and if we go to so 514 where labeling is, it is important, and this is something that actually, it's like we should also add, it does say clearly that this label should be adjacent to every RCD in the installation. Including socket outlets? <laughs> every, yeah. every RCD in the installation. And it should be a certain size. And it has to be no smaller than that illustrated. That includes the periodic label. That's a hell of a board. That's a, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, they, they put the words in the regs, and I think they assume that that, that will happen. So you're going to end up having a suitcase on the wall just for the stickers, I would suggest. I don't know. Let's wait for them to start selling the stickers yeah, okay. first. So there you go. You fit yourself an RCD, individual RCD socket, and there yep. will be that nice silver sticker stuck alongside yeah. it. Yeah, that big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So we're talking what a, th a quarter yeah. of a page. It says no we'll smaller. Stu stu well, it's actually the same size as a socket. It's only longer, <laughs> so you'd yeah. have to stick that by the side. You would have thought we'd have had a very small one because again, that button needs to be pressed. I needs guess. To be I guess. The I, I guess the reason for this is because maybe just people aren't doing it enough. So you know, I mean, we're not doing of, it every three months. Well, you are, maybe. Well, I am, but some, some of the sites, I mean, some of the sites I'll go to, they'll have like an asset register. Yeah. And they'll have a company come in and that jo their job is to go around going boom, 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 boom. Okay. But many other companies just are ignorant to that. And domestic. Yeah, also, and domestic yeah, as well. Yeah. And, you know. But, but you always think when you're, you're holding on to the cut lawnmower lead and you're standing in wet grass in your flip-flops, you're probably going to think as you're holding on to it, I sheer hope. That oh. I've tested that RCD. Yeah, so we've got yeah, direct yeah, contact. Yeah. We'll be all right. I've got direct contact. Well, how many times? I mean, I don't know how much times you get onto sites, but how many times do you just hear someone go, "Oh, there's an RCD." Yeah, oh yeah, you know, fantastic. Even, even in the events industry, that I do a lot of work in. Oh, there's an RCD. That you know, plug it in, turn it on, press the button. That's fine. But if you don't maintain those devices, you know, I did, when we did um, we did the um, sign off and the certification for the Royal Ascot meeting this year. And all the distro had uh, a pat testing company come in and tested it all. And when we watched them doing it. They didn't have the access within the instrument to test the RCDs. Oh, wow. Because they were locked out because the instrument had settings on it. Oh. And we were like, okay, so how are you verifying them? And they just went, oh. but so we had to do it ourselves. But it's got an RCD, yeah. so you'd be right. It's, yeah, it's, of course, it's, yeah, because you know, it's got an RCD, RCD on it. Yeah. So uh, we do need to obviously stress more testing. Yeah. But, uh, be interesting to see what happened with the, the socket outlet. It's a big, ugly label. So that's only a couple of, obviously, a couple of changes yeah. that were easy enough for our learners who sit behind the camera. Yeah. yeah. So anything else you want to add? I think we're pretty no, much covered. No, but I mean, cover. I'd, like, I'd like to say, I mean, these hot connect indicators, I've not seen these before, but I've, I've, I've heard about them. Because um, obviously, I do a lot of work with thermal imaging, and we always are trying to find ways for clients to identify where an overload or heating effect yeah. has occurred. And obviously, once it's cooled down, you know, because it's sustained overload, if you turn the load off, it'll cool down eventually, but the damage may be done. So, um, yeah, we think these are brilliant. This, this, is, this, is, yeah. this is somebody watching that consumer unit for the entire time the lid's on yeah, until yeah, yeah, you yeah. come back to do your electrical installation and they change, condition yeah. and they change colour. So, they'll go from purple to pink. Yeah, they, and they stay pink. They do. That's the thing. At so 70 they've degrees. Changed, they've changed colour, and 70 degrees most likely will be the limiting temperature of the yep. conductor, 70 degree thermoplastic. Yep, it will be. So obviously, yep. they're so limited for that. So we wouldn't put them on the thermo setting, but yeah. Um, but even if you did, you've got at least got an indicator that they got to 70. I know got, we yeah. can go to 90, but you know, we've got that indicating factor uh, as well. Our, our buddy, Paul me 
Ian's got these installed at his station, I believe, and I'm happy to. I'm happy I, to. I think he's a big advocator of them. And he yes, and I'm happy to get some feedback on how they work. But hopefully, he'll be showing yeah. photographs of boards periodically for us as well. I imagine you will share them on your social media mm. platforms. Okay, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's good. So. So let's let's say for this bit. So if you got to this part, I'll be surprised. But if you have got this part, that we've got the Sparky Ninja YouTube channel, and we've got the Sparky Ninja Facebook page, and I think you're going to have a uh, your own web uh, web page soon. Is that true? Yes. Well, I've got the domain. Just yep. got to get the guy to build something on it. So we can continue yeah. to watch David Watts give away and an app. World uh, and an app and an app. World class yeah. learning material for the cost of how much normally you charge? <laughs> as free as I can make it. Free as you free, say, as, free, okay. as free as I can make it. As free, free as I can make it. it. I mean, if people want to send me stuff to help make it free, then go for that. So yeah. I you think know. the people behind us are all going to clap now because they'll clap when I say clap. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, guess, I guess that's proof to you guys that, there's not, that, uh, that it's not just us two in this room. I, I might have brought that in though, yeah. with a little special app. Oh, a special, a special effect. So we're going to have a go at saying goodbye? You're going you're gonna, to, because I want you to do that, because it's probably the, well, We're going to do it your way. I hope this video's been some help. And then the old thumbs up. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, all right. All so right. we can't cut that, we're just going to leave that in. So we hope this video. We hope this video has been some help. help. There we go. That's your way.